Hey everyone, it's James. And Stephanie, and hello from the UK. Well, more specifically, hello from the Guaning. Well, yes, yes. So, I don't know if you can hear, it's kind of raining outside. <laughs> it's been raining a lot the past couple weeks. Pretty much the entire time <laughs> we've been here. So we've been especially glad to have the extra space yes. that this Guaning provides. Yes, we're at the end of our trip, and we have a lot of impressions that we've gathered about staying in the Guaning. So we thought we would give you a tour of the Guaning yeah. and um, share with you some of our our impressions and we want to know what you think about the glonning too yeah but we're going to start that off with a well i'll give you a quick show of the camper van because it's yes. kind of different from stuff we get in the states yeah. so we'll show you that next all right let's go all right so this is the camper van um if you saw our other video you know this is a volkswagen transporter and compared to u.s rvs this is very it's very simplified compared to a lot of the things we get in the u.s rvs like this is the entire electrical system right here so there's like a master switch that gives you the voltage there's this one master switch for all the lights which now i've shut off um, and there's a switch for the water pump and a couple other things but it's very simplistic um, it does have a pop top and you can see I'm standing up here in the pop top. Um, this does work manually, not manually, it does work electrically by a little switch that's down there and it pops right up and it cinches down for travel. Um, this seat turns around, it's kind of interesting, it's a bench seat. Um, the bench seat, it's kind of a manual turnaround. There are these knobs here that you have to undo and then you kind of swivel the whole shebang around. And it's it's a little more manual than like something in a in like the ProMaster or something, so that's that. Uh, the driver's seat is on the wrong side. If you ask me, I still haven't gotten used to that, and we've been here like two weeks. Um, so now over here in the galley, uh, there's a rather small sink. There is a stove with a with a couple burners on it. And that's all fairly standard stuff. One thing I thought was really interesting is there is a chest style fridge and there it is so it goes fairly deep and apparently if you turn it too cold it will freeze things like unintentionally and then there's another storage compartment back here which we have been using largely just for foodstuffs and there's some um, components back there like electrical components we are plugged into shore power here i don't know how many amps it is but it's 250 volts so it's kind of a lot more than it might sound like even if it's only like 10 amps um, there's additional storage under here and under here. These are both actually sort of large-ish. And uh, there's a lot more storage in what they would call the boot, kind of back here behind the back seat. Right now, we've just got a bunch of bedding piled up back there. Now, it's been raining most of the time, so we haven't opened the sides up here, but these do open up for a little ventilation. Like I said, it's been raining, so we haven't done that much. There is another bed up here, and if I were to pull this down, you can see the bed up top. It's been kind of chilly, so we haven't slept up there. Now, to make the bed down here, it's uh, kind of interesting what happens here. So, this seat, I'm not going to do it because there's no room in here to do it and film it, but this seat, there's a lever and it flips forward like 180 degrees, so it lays kind of in here. And then this seat flips down, and then there's another flat part in the back that kind of makes the whole of the bed. And it's actually been quite large. We have had no problems at all in the bed. Um, there have been, let's see, there's some uh, additional storage up there and some storage here for various and sundry other things. And that's kind of it. That's the camper van. All right, well, I got my uh, van nerd episode <laughs> yes. out of the way. So. Yes, let's go on with a glawning tour. So let's start with the camp stove. That has been my favorite part of this whole thing. Yes, I had no clue how lovely it was gonna be because it's been cold here and being able to throw a little fire on and uh just it just warms this place up so yeah. nicely so a, a confession um and steph and i are not normally campfire yes. folks and we don't mean to start a, a holy war in the comments <laughs> but we're not really campfire folks but this the stove changes that completely right well campfire you know you're outside you're still it's cold except for that little space right there that's where it's warm and your clothes smell like smoke and then you have to deal with the fire and the safety issue and so we just don't ever bother 
Right. But this changes. Totally different. Yes. You can just, if, you, if you're done with it, you can just close it up and leave. Yes. And it's it's pretty much okay. There's no smoke in here. And with the, with the canvas of the guaning about, it keeps all the heat in. Yes. It's, but it gives you that same feel of sitting around and staring at a campfire. It's just very relaxing. It sets a nice vibe. Yeah. Plus, you can cook on it if you really want. <laughs> All right, so the shape of the glonning. So it's it's round mm -hmm. with the center pole, and it seems like people like to decorate the center pole with... <laughs> yeah, we've seen a couple other examples, and they've yes. all had the center pole decorated. And I guess I can see why. It would be sort of industrial looking without a yeah. decoration on it. But there's the two entrances. So if you think of a clock, it's at there's an entrance at 12, and then there's an entrance at 3. three. And between those two, that's where it's the highest. The tent is the highest, and that is your walkway. So um, people can put the camp stove wherever they want. Yeah, I didn't realize that. The, the camp mm -hmm. stove is actually something you can, you make your own hole sort yes, of in the morning. Yes, it comes with a template, you cut that in. Um, so uh, you kind of keep that in mind with your walkway, knowing you have that walkway. Right. So um, one thing that, that I've noticed about the tent being round is, to me, if I were to, to do this on, on the regular, I would get a bunch of oriental rugs and throw pillows <laughs> and decorate it like some big harem kind of I think that would be lovely. Tent thing. And that's what the glawning feels like. It's more about um, feel than function. So, yeah. you know, you get that, you set it up. And I've even been playing with the decor in here since we got here. I'm constantly changing it around, which is yes. weird because in the van, I would never bother doing that. Yeah, it, it's very different. So the camper vans are a lot smaller, so you're you're yes. glad for the extra space. But even in the even in the states, when you come back to the van after a day of whatever you're doing, yeah. you're just kind of sitting in a van, you know. Right. Whereas this, you come back and you're in this space that's kind of decorated, and yes. it's it's more of a place to hang out than maybe inside of a van. Yeah, it's it's so different than our typical mindset. It's been an interesting eye opener because I do think there are people who feel this way about their vans. You know, they set them up very comfortably and it gives a nice vibe and we've always been about function so yeah. it's been interesting yeah. but the windows so uh they have all these little half moon windows around and the glotting really does have two parts so it has the vestibule that attaches to the van mm -hmm. and then the round glotting itself and um so the vestibule is interesting that the top of it attaches to the van we've seen that but the bottom is open to the underside of the van right right um, but you could also use this without that vestibule, I suppose, and that might be some place yeah. where we would use this back home because we live where it's very hot and it might mm -hmm. be nice to have like a shade structure out in, in the yard or garden or something. Yes, yes. Um, it would be good for parties, I think, yeah. and stuff. And that brings up like when would we use it? So we've talked a lot about we've this talked a lot about that. as the week's been going on and, and I don't think we would use it every trip. No, absolutely not every trip. Uh, we wouldn't bring it. Yeah. But there are some trips where we absolutely would find this just fabulous yeah. and useful, like like rallies, uh, meetups. Yes, yes the social we, things. with When we get together with the family and the grandkids and we need more space. Yeah, or if you're going to be there a while, where, where you can yeah. make the investment of setting something like this up Yes. to enjoy the space throughout the rest of your time. Yeah, so, so this would be more of an event thing, I think, if, if we bought yeah, one. Yeah, festival, something like uh -huh. that. Where but when there. we had it, it would be amazing. Yeah. But our usual run and gun style of camping, probably yep. not. You're not going to set this up in a Walmart parking lot. Right, right. <laughs> Okay, and the last thing we want to talk about is the drive-away feature. Yes. And that's been very useful. We've actually mm -hmm. taken this van on yeah. some sightseeing trips while we've been here. Where did we, where did we take the van? Oh, to? that was when we went to Whitby, when we saw... By the sea. Yes, Whitby Abbey, which was Bram Stoker's inspiration for Dracula. Yeah, Whitby Abbey, cool. it's really cool looking and it's very yes. falling apart. Yes, and but the town was very touristy and fun too. Yeah. And I whacked my head on the lighthouse. I know, <laughs> the whippy lighthouse. James left a little of his skin. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but the driveway feature is what made that possible. Yes. And, and pretty know, easy. That only took about 10 seconds to disconnect. It was basically just pulling of the top piece. And then driving away. Yeah. And it wasn't too difficult to reconnect either. The most difficult part of reconnecting, to mm -hmm. me, seemed to be 
getting the van in the right spot. Yes. To, but I guess that just comes with practice. Well, it's kind of like levelers back home, you know, driving up onto the, the levelers takes yeah. a little, it's easier to drive off the levelers than back on. Yes. <laughs> so, but th that I guess comes with practice because James, UK James, didn't seem mm -hmm. to have any trouble with it. Yes. So we've been here this whole time and we're trying to gather feedback from our North American viewers. Yes. Is to, this really is a fact-finding mission for mm -hmm. us and for Glawning. They're kind of curious as to whether or not something like this would work. So we're very interested in your opinion. Yeah, so would you buy one or how? what would you like to see different about it? Yeah, what would have to change? How could you see yourself using it? Yes. These are the kinds of things that they're really interested to know. So we would love it if you all would click the link in the YouTube description, come on over to the corresponding article that goes with this video and leave us some feedback because we are genuinely curious about what you think. All right, that's gonna do it. Thanks everyone. Bye.